major was communication studies focusing on culture, which but is, But as a again, child, were you, I'm always fascinated with people <laughs> who are, like, do you, did you wake up one day and say, okay, I want to study that? Because a lot of us, you know, when I went to school, it's like, do you want to be a teacher or do you want to, it's yeah. kind of neat that you got into this exploring of some in-depth yeah, well, stuff for yourself. I think I'm, I'm a very creative person. Yes. And what communication studies allowed me to do is to really spread myself out and yeah. investigate a lot of different avenues. And I just organically let myself fall where my interests were. And so my minor was in women's studies. Mm -hmm. So a lot of feminist theory came into that factor. Right, and right. then applying that within healthcare is really interesting. So that's where a lot of my research was. So you were able to yeah. take that and then, so then you applied for the AmeriCorps. Yep. And then you got that job. Yep, and that started to give me more experience with youth development. Mm -hmm. So I went from you know Alabama and then I work as, in focusing more on women's health and then now I'm focusing on, on kids. Okay. So I was, again, I was having more, having more of a general and a broader experience, but what that did since I was working on after school programs focusing on giving kids an outlet to have uh, not only homework help, in an, right. in, in an environment where it, it's important that kids have that extra after school time because right. the bri bridging between school and the home can sometimes, it, it, you know, it kind of leaves kids can be wondering if they don't have an activity that they you know, are destined to do, if they right. have a sport or something that, you know, takes up their time. So I was sort of that, that bridge. They would come to me, I would facilitate this program and they would get the homework help, healthy snack, we would do different games. So it was focusing on physical activity and that's how public health came into the picture for me because I could see the impact that physical activity had on the kids' aptitude okay. and their ability to focus on their homework and, and be engaged. And do yeah. many after-school programs utilize AmeriCorps? Many do. Okay. I, I mean, there's a lot of different ty types of AmeriCorps programs. Yes. You'll hear AmeriCorps VISTA. Right. There's um, many STEM-focused programs now. So right. it's, it's expanding. Okay. But the Promise Fellowship is primarily focused on representing America's Promise Alliance, which is my platform okay, for Miss yes. America. So, so it all comes full circle. Yes, yes, I love it. <laughs> my experience, it. yeah. So America's Promise Alliance is a national organization with hundreds of partners across the country, mm -hmm. one of which was the Massachusetts Promise Fellowship, focusing on helping students to graduate from high school. Oh, that's great. And one of the ways we do that is support programs like after-school programs. Mm -hmm. right. So that's how I came, became involved and exposed to America's Promise Alliance. And I thought it was a beautiful program and right. organization to represent yes. going forward into Miss America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then at Tulane, so then, so you worked for AmeriCorps. Yep. And then what was the next natural step to go to New Orleans. <laughs> Why not? Why, Why not, not go to New Orleans? the South, it's hot in the fall. Well, what I did know is Tulane yeah. has a, a reputation in global public health. So I yes. knew, applying for my master's in public health, that it's a competitive program and I would be able to get, again, that broader, uh, more comprehensive program that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So I went and I started focusing in health communication as, the, again, that was my passion. So I was able to apply that and then brought back in that youth development piece. So I started one of the jobs I had. I was working as a food literacy educator mm -hmm. and kids were one of my uh, my target audiences. So developed a program in Central City, New Orleans uh, with the Cookbook Project, which happens to be a Massachusetts-born oh, organization. Nice, so nice. I was just bringing all my favorite pieces yes. in. I had my New England and New Orleans, and it was just nice to have all, all, the, all those things I'm passionate about and love. No, you know, that's good. Place. That's yeah. good, because there's a wonderful video online that you um, did right after you won yes. Miss Massachusetts, and it kind of mm -hmm. tells your story, and it's um, it's on your website too, yep. which I have, um, meganfuller.org, right? Yep. It has all of your links to just yep. all the neat stuff you're, you're doing now. So what do you think? Do you feel like you're staying here or would you like to be, live in the South or what is your, because you've called both places home at different times. Yeah, and then they, they are both my home. And I, I like to say I'm a nomad at heart. Yes, so yes. I think I'm, I'm destined to move and to really go on and experience. That's sort of my motto. I really want to get out and experience all that our country has to offer. Yes. I like to say I studied abroad in Alabama because when you're yeah. born and raised in New England, that Different. is sort of like studying abroad. Yeah. So I think that's a mantra that I'll continue to pursue. So come July when I pass on the Miss America crown, uh, Miss America crown. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Was that my slip? I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. When I pass on the Miss Massachusetts crown, 
um, you know, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be moving on. I'll, I'll be going to my next step. Can't say exactly where that'll be yet, yeah. so stay tuned for my yeah. next steps. But, but, but yeah. starting now, you've got what, four, well, you've got a good five months left yeah. of your reign. What, do you, what are you most looking forward to? Is it fun to see the other girls kind of coming and asking you for advice now that you've already won it? It's, what is yeah, that like? it, it can be kind of strange because we all become very good friends in the system, so it's it's it is a sisterhood, and that's what we often right. call it because yes. it, we just become really good friends. Yes. and so in every aspect, you know, I'll, I'll meet up with friends in Boston. Well, and we'll nice. chat about the pageants. I saw Miss um, Taunton's goodbye, um, Devin, yes. Devin Williams. So um, her goodbye had some great pictures they do a, a retrospective <laughs> of the year and oh wow they were really close like yeah, some of yeah your we're special were, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and i think it's important for people to see that because often the stereotype thing we're like oh well who was the meanest one yes. and i'm like no yeah, right. well, it was definitely me <laughs> right. i don't know what to tell you but and yeah it, it's it's nice to for people to actually see that we are really good friends you do find the, the, the well people with you the commonalities have, we have a common friend rocky who's the president oh excuse me <laughs> don't i might be bringing this home <laughs> <laughs> but our friend Rocky, um, he is the president of Miss Boston, yep. and we'll both be there this weekend. Um, they're going to be crowning a new Miss Boston. And he and I have become very good friends just on our basic love of this organization, and he was in Atlantic City, um, and, and he and I watched one of your rehearsals, and we just had a great time. And you really mm -hmm. kind of build a good bond of people that really care about an organization. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I, I say, as every woman who comes into this program has something that gets her through the door. Yes. Was it the scholarship money? Was it the opportunity to perform your talent? What was it? Everyone has something different that was the driving force for them. And for me, as I've investigated and, and pursued this opportunity, it was the networking. Yes. And I can't tell you how many of my you know, pageant friends uh, and mentors have written me recommendation letters for jobs, school, everything. It becomes m a much broader network than right. just the pageant scene. It really does translate into what I call the real life yes. <laughs> beyond, the, beyond the crown. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so true. And so speaking of the crown, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and I just took it out of its beautiful camera shot. Yeah. Sorry, Talise. Tell us the four points because that's a question I, I always ask. Um, yeah. So the when four points judge. was actually started by Four Points Magazine. So Four Points Magazine was based on Miss America and telling the story of all the title holders across the country. So we have style, service, scholarship, and success. Mm -hmm. And that's often one of those questions that comes up in in your interview yes. with judges: is which which of those yes. points resonates with you the oh, most? Yes. What is that? Megan? <laughs> which one? And I was like, well, why would I pick just one? I love them all. I have I have. <laughs> Four. Like, is that okay? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, back in the day when I was interviewing, you sat and they sat across from you and you were in a chair and you just interviewed in a suit. Now you girls are all decked in bling and a, at a podium and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could. And forget the bikinis for me. I mean, I'm pretty impressed that, uh, you know, that you, what it, you do. It's, <laughs> it, it's definitely one the phase of competition that has the most controversy and I'm often asked about it, but yeah. I, I, can, I have to say, it's really fun. Yeah, yeah, I bet. I, I, and I try to remember the first time I did it. <laughs> that was the first time that I walked on stage in a swimsuit. And I think being a dancer, it's sort of, it came a little bit more naturally because I was yes. used to being in costume and sort of, you know, again, you kind of shut out the world when you, when you go on stage. There's that yeah. fog of the lights, and so right, you, you're not right. really focused on the fact that, oh my God, I'm, I'm wearing a bikini on stage. <laughs> <laughs> right. All doing? these people are watching me and taking photos. It's very strange. <laughs> very strange environment. And not until have, I've been Miss Massachusetts and I haven't been competing have I realized what that feels like to be the audience. Yes, like, oh, <laughs> this awkward okay. moment. Yes. Uh, but, you know, every Just phase is important. Just wait till you judge it, too. I mean, it's ah, like yeah. you're right up there and you're like, okay. So, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of. It. Yeah, but the interview portion, it's interesting to, to always hear from both the interviewer perspective mm -hmm. and then the interviewee. Right. Because more often than not, the interviewers tend to be more nervous than the interviewees. Yes. At least that's what I've found. Well, I just yeah. find for me, like I ask um, questions trying to find the personality because to be honest, yeah. I don't want to 
hammer someone about a particular political subject if I haven't read about it myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, you know, who am I don't, as a don't person? Don't tell them <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, don't watch this. No, it just, no, but sometimes, like, that's what I'm the type of judge. And sometimes I'll, if they're walking across, introducing themselves, judges next to me will not smile at all. And I kind of smile because I think, yep. you know what? You're up there. Let me show that I'm engaged yep. by you for even a minute. We're not supposed to clap. There are all sorts of rules. Oh, yeah. And, um, and neutrality. And, and, <laughs> and, yeah. But I find in some way, if you show a little bit, like, I, I appreciate, you know, what you're doing. That's, you know, but that's how I do it. Other judges are very, you know, they're not going to, yep. or they're going to ask every hard question there is. But mm. it, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, I think it's a great thing. I, after what, I performed uh, 22 years ago or, or even mm. more that I was in the pageant and I still find it to be a, just a wonderful, viable uh, program for young women. I think it's great. Oh, absolutely. And I take all those experiences I've had in the interview room to my job interviews. Yes, yes. And I, and I can't even say how many times I've said, wow, that felt pretty easy. Yes. Probably because I've been grilled before <laughs> when, I, when I walked into an interview <laughs> asking about all my opinions on some of the most controversial uh, issues right. going on in the country and, and, and global. And tell us in 10 seconds. <laughs> and tell us, tell me that in 20 seconds. Oh, let me just solve world peace for you today. <laughs> right, right. If that was possible, I think we'd all be doing well, that. Well, and then yeah. you, I, didn't you make national or local news about how Miss Georgia was asked about Tom Brady? I did. I got a lot of publicity yes, for that. Yes, yes, because her <laughs> answer wasn't too positive for Tom, but that's okay. We love Tom. <laughs> we love Tom. We this do. is a plug for Tom. Tom. Um, so what I want to ask, and I ask every guest, because I encourage them to be um, on the All Friends Cabaret to share whatever um, they find interesting and how they're kind of moving on in their creative life. So my question to you is, is how would you share with someone how they can, you know, pick up that paintbrush and follow their passions or get up and sing for the first time? What would you, what would you say to them? Well, I think it's, it's hard because I've, ha I've, been sort of fearless in my approach to my career thus far and pageantry has been one of those ways in which I was able to really flourish mm -hmm. and embrace that risk-taking part of me. Mm -hmm. So my greatest advice is not to be afraid to take those risks and go with your intuition because very often your intuition is, is speaking to you for a reason. So to you know, really take that opportunity to investigate those career paths that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have have investigated before, have that foresight, be proactive, right. and really be curious. Right, because sometimes the then you meet that right person on the road, or you know what I mean? Exactly. If you say, oh, maybe I'll investigate this, and you meet someone that, I think some of those happenstances are part of it too. Yeah, and, it, and, and often it's disguised too. So I, I like to say, even, I, even though when I went to Miss America, did, would I have loved to have been called into the top 10? Yes. Would I have loved to have won? Of course. Yes. But it's that loss, so to speak, that has steered me in a different direction right. that I'm very excited about pursuing. Right, right. So I mean, taking, taking those disguised moments and, and really pursuing them further is, is important too. Oh my gosh, well Megan, this was a great, great Thanks, interview because I love having, I love having um, the ladies on every year yep. and we love a crown. I am not going to put it on tonight, but, but can I, I put it should. on you? Of course. <laughs> Doesn't the she moment where lovely? Christine crowns me. Yes. <laughs> She'll never forget it. Never no. will I. <laughs> no. So as I always say on our um, program, yeah. write to me. We're on Twitter and Facebook. We are able to um, reach out to me because I will contact you and then you can come on and be on your show to share your story, just like Megan did tonight. And um, I'm excited to um, have you here. Thank you so much Thank you, again. Christine. And so we'll see you next time, and we'll see you here on the All Friends Cabaret. Thanks for joining us.